السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفقه ونفثه. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين. والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين. والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأولين والآخرين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في سورة البقرة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور والذين كفروا أولياءهم الطاغوت يخرجونهم من النور إلى الظلمات أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون. And this beautiful verse means Allah is the protector and the support of the believers. He takes them out of darkness into light. Why the disbelievers? The supporters of the shayateen, they take them out of the light into darkness. Then, after he explained to us that believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only true God, and committing oneself to comply with his teachings, this is the ultimate truth, and this is the ultimate success, and this is the light. The light of this life, and the light in the hereafter. He has told us that there is a price. And everybody of the believers shall be tested and tried. In the beginning of Surah Al-Ankabut, Allah Almighty says, Alif Lam Mim. أحسب الناس أن يتركوا أن يقولوا آمنا وهم لا يفتنون. Do people think that they will be left alone to say, yes, we believe and we accept Islam without being tested and tried? Nay. ولقد فتن الذين من قبلهم. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَذِبِينَ And indeed, we have tested people before them, the nations before. Every people who accepted faith and decided to believe in Allah and in His oneness have been tested in order to verify who is true in His faith or her Iman and who is weak and vulnerable. Jannah, heaven and paradise has a price. The price is not cheap. It is not for everybody to say, yeah, 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 I believe in God. Without encountering any tests, without having to succeed in the tests and the trials, without having to be patient, without confronting the falsehood and remaining steadfast on the straight path. Being a believer is not like going to a field trip or outdoor camping. Being a believer encounters tests and trials and do's and do not do's. So when somebody becomes a Muslim, he or she will understand that if they chose to be Muslims out of belief, out of full conviction, there is a set of rules and regulations 
that one had to comply with. Today, as I uh, was riding next to the driver, he said, Sir, the law in Malaysia requires even the passengers to bottle their seatbelt. Seat you are in Malaysia now. You gotta follow the rules. Right? It shows to come as a visitor, you gotta follow the rules. There is, in every place you go, certain rules and regulations. I can never drive and the uh, driving wheel is on the right hand side. It's impossible for me. But it is not an excuse to drive on the right side to say, well, because I'm from Cairo, or because you drive this way in America, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get in an accident. So you have to comply with the rules. And that's why Islam is a very balanced religion. It does not force anyone to accept it. Have you ever heard in history that Prophet Muhammad or any of his companions or was it mentioned anywhere in the Quran, in the Sunnah, that we have to convert people to Islam, and if they do not convert, we are killed them, there should not be any compulsion in religion. It's a matter of choice. So when you choose it, you accept the entire package, and you understand that there was not a single believer since Adam alayhi salam till the day of judgment but Allah tested them in order to verify the strength of their iman it is very interesting to understand that the better is the test the greater will be your status with Allah because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said أشد الناس بلاء الأنبياء. Can you imagine the most severely tested people were the prophets? If some people think for some reason that just for saying I accepted Islam or I am born in Islam, then Allah has to deliver to me success, wealth. Richness and a beautiful wife and a wonderful kids and a good job and 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 I should never get sick. Why? Because I believe in God. Well, then you gotta be living in heaven, though. And this world of this life is not about heaven. We work hard in this world in order to deserve to enter heaven. Only in heaven you never get sick. Only in heaven you eat whatever you wish and there is no haram and halal. Everything is permissible. Only in heaven you don't have to go to work every day in the morning. You don't have to go to school because it's a place of rest. It's a place of joy and delight. But in this life, you have to struggle. Struggle while going to work in the traffic. You have a very bad traffic here. So, this is what life is all about. You remember I quoted the verse this morning with regards to Prophet Musa salam. Prophet Musa salam, in the first sitting to kill him, وَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمُ إِيمَانًا So, the believers at the time of Musa salam were concealing their belief. They could not dare to say, I am a follower of Musa. Same with every prophet, or the vast majority of them. There were stages where the believers had to conceal their belief, had to hide, because the non believers would persecute them, would even kill them. A companion by the name of Bab. Ibn al-Arad once came to the Prophet sallallahu and he was sitting in front of the Kaaba. At the early stage of da'wah where Muslims were really persecuted, you know, they would capture, 
those who accept Islam, if they know about them, and will take them out in the desert under the extremely hot sun and again is the burning sand and will lay them on the sand bare skin and torture them and whip them and burn their bodies. So Khabbab came to the Prophet and said, O Messenger of Allah, aren't you the Messenger of Allah? He said, yes. He said, aren't we following the truth? He said, yes. He said, isn't Allah our Lord, our Creator, able to do all things? And He's the most powerful? And He sees what's going on with us? He said, yes. He said, why then does not He intervene? Why does He not save us from the torture? Why doesn't He destroy the disbelievers and the pagans? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, By Allah, a believer from the nations before us will be brought to persecution by the disbelievers. They will place a sword in the middle of his head in order to abandon his faith. But he will be very strong in belief to the extent that they will sow him into hell. They will separate his flesh from his bones. They will bury him alive. And none of that, none of that will persuade him or make him abandon his faith or religion. Indeed, Allah will give you victory. But you people rush and haste. It doesn't come all of a sudden. Imagine if today we come out to the world and we say, Islam is the ultimate truth and it is the only true religion and any other religion is false. And only if you are a Muslim you will be victorious. Then Allah the Almighty made the Muslims victorious, made the Muslim the most intelligent and made him the richest. Then obviously everybody would like to be a Muslim. So where is the test then? Everybody likes to go to America and get a green card or a citizenship. Why? Because they think life is easy there. And when they spend their entire saving in order to buy a visa or travel to America, even if they have a degree, if the person is an MD or a doctor, once they go to America, they are confronted with this fact. Now, you are in a place where you thought it's a heaven, but it is not. You have to work in order to feed yourself. If you don't work, you will starve to death. You will be homeless. Okay, I'm a doctor. I used to practice medicine and I was a big teacher or whatever. Okay, not here. You have to take a test in order to be certified or licensed to practice. Well, uh, but it's a hard here to take it, okay? Then work in any job until you study and take the test. So people who work in car wash, and he's a doctor, who serve beer and pork and wash the dishes, and he's a doctor, or clean the trash. Why? Because this is not heaven, yo. You thought it's a heaven? No. You have to work and work hard. But I have a green card. I got a citizenship, even if you have that, if you don't work, you will starve. So, if you think by saying, in this life, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, all of a sudden the heaven will start raining gold and silver, and you will become rich, and you will drive Mercedes, and you will have to work, because you're a Muslim, you're dreaming. No. Once you choose to be a Muslim, you'll be tested. So I will be a Byzantine slave who was once traveling and he was captured and he was sold in Mecca as a slave, but he is very intelligent. So he made a deal with his master that he's going to pay him that much and free him. So he walked hard until he ransomed himself. Then he worked hard and he worked hard until he became a very successful merchant and businessman and he made 
a great deal of money 